What up everyone, Big Kev back in the building. Today we have another one from the Fat Electrician. This one's called Basically a War Crime. America's future weapon, the XM-29. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's check it out. I guess part two of all the weird future weapons the government wasted our money on. Today we're talking about that time that Uncle Sam decided that he wanted to take the M16, the US military's primary firearm, and replace it with a grenade launcher. So Operation Give Everybody a Grenade Launcher is officially known as the OICW program, which stands for Objective Individual Combat Weapon. Why on earth would you call it that? Well, because the weapon they made was the XM-29, aka the tactical car door. <laughs> That's a crazy looking gun. I've never, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a gun like that before. That is a 20 millimeter grenade launcher that fires programmable smart grenades on top and a German G36 on the bottom. And when your end goal is to give a weapon that ridiculous to every single grunt in the US military, you kind of have to give it a bland acronym of a nickname. That's a crazy weapon to be the standard weapon. Because when Geneva finds out that you're replacing the M16, she's gonna have some questions. And when she wants to know the name and a brief description of this new weapon, it behooves everybody for you to be like, um, it's objectively speaking, it is a combat weapon and it's meant for an individual and we call it the OICW. Because the last thing the brass wants to do is go in there and tell the truth. I, um, it's, it's a semi-automatic grenade launcher with an underslung 5.56 rifle. I, we don't have an official name for it yet, but the boys are calling it the Baloney Mist Maker 5000. Once that happens, it's all downhill from there. Next thing you know, people are asking questions, people are making points, you know, like, hey, exploding bullets have been illegal since 1899. Would you care to explain the difference between an exploding bullet and a really small grenade that gets shot out of a gun? It yeah, right. <laughs> I think, I feel like they're very close to the same thing, at least in uh, principle. It would be a complete nightmare. So, acronym, seems dumb, actually very important. It's basically camouflage at this point. I'm just gonna be honest with you, that tangent was not supposed to be part of the video and I have no idea how to continue from here. So, I'm just gonna rewind and start over, okay? See you in a second. Today we're talking about America's Starship Trooper weapon, the XM-29. That was a good movie. All right, so picking up where we left off. Last week, we covered the ACR program, the Advanced Combat Rifle. If you don't remember, basically the military came out right after Vietnam and said, hey, we want a new weapon to replace the M16. We want it to be twice as accurate as the M16 is. And all the weapons manufacturers took that as, hey, let's build a bunch of space guns to hunt aliens with. There was all kinds of craziness going on. They had guns that were shooting darts. They had guns that had grandfather clocks inside of them. And Colt even made a gun that every time you shot a bad guy, it was worth double XP. And when the smoke settled from all this ridiculous innovation, somewhere along the way, the military came to the conclusion of like, oh, instead of trying to rebuild a gun from the ground up, we could just put a scope on the M16 and it'd be way more accurate. And that's the story of how the American military got ACOGs in the M145 combat optic, which is great. The only problem was they spent $300 million to figure out that guns are more accurate when you put scopes on them and now people want answers so the government huh. launched an internal investigation against itself and you're never going to believe what happened the government determined that the government did nothing wrong <sighs> you see the program shocker <laughs> didn't fail because of corruption or the government's inability to point out obvious shit clearly the program failed because the government has done such an incredible job with the m16a2 it simply can't be beat ever. It is the pinnacle of ballistic performance. They have maxed out the skill tree on small arms and bullets. There's nothing else that can be done. We live in a golden age. Everything worth discovering has been discovered. The report then goes on to recommend that if the government still wanted to increase the lethality of its soldiers, the only option they should pursue is an explosive option, i.e. we're all getting grenade launchers. Yes! That's awesome! So they that's, a great, <laughs> that's a great reference there. They fire up the government contracts, and this time they do actually have a declared winner, and that is HK with their submission, the XM-29. And to be fair, techno- I really love the uh, clips that the uh, fat electrician throws in here. They're always spot on. Logically speaking, this thing is actually really impressive. That scope on top isn't just a scope. It's a regular scope, a night vision scope, a thermal scope, a range finder, and a ballistic calculator all in one. Oh, damn. It does all the things. And using that setup, they're able to pre-program every grenade before they fire it to airburst mode so it blows up at a certain distance away from the gun, not necessarily before it hits something. All right, so in theory, for example- He's not wrong about calling it a future weapon, Jesus. 
how this is supposed to work is Santa's a bad guy hiding behind a concrete wall, so you whip out the Bologna Mist Maker 5000. You then point the gun at the concrete wall the bad guy's hiding behind, you click this little dot button by the trigger, that tells the laser rangefinder how far away the wall is. Then, if you want it to explode a little bit past the wall, you hit the plus a few times, now the grenade is going to be programmed to explode a little bit past the distance of where that wall is away from you. So then, you just fire the grenade right over the top of the wall, and it's going to explode as soon as it passes the wall, right on top of the enemy's head. And then, if the situation doesn't really call for grenades... Wow, it's crazy how advanced uh, weapons have gotten nowadays. It's a little uh, scary at times. I mean, for as cool as it is, it's also pretty terrifying. It also has an underslung 5.56 rifle that is essentially the HKG-36. And most importantly, on that rifle, to answer the question that every Marine has had since the very beginning of this video, yes, there is a bayonet lug for this weapon. I mean, could you imagine being the guy that gets taken- Always have to have the option to throw on a knife. Taken out with a bayonet on the end of this monstrosity. You're just sitting up there at the pearly gate waiting to find out if you're going up or down. Somebody leans over and is like, hey, what happened to you? Oh, I got hit with a drone strike. What about you? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think I'm a marine jumped into my trench and stabbed me with a piece of luggage. So this begs the question, why on earth didn't the United States adopt this thing if it's so awesome? Well, it's awesome in theory, it's not so awesome in practice. There's a lot of things wrong with it. For one, this thing empty with no ammunition inside of it weighs 18 pounds, which is very heavy. That's crazy heavy for a weapon, especially for like the weapon that you wanted to outfit everyone with. Uh, that seems like that should have been a uh, red flag right from the beginning. For a firearm. Uh, to put that into perspective, an M16 kitted out with a grenade launcher, an ACOG, a PEC-15 IR unit, the whole shebang is about 12 pounds. So this thing is 50% heavier. Also with the XM29, there was just some bad design ideas, okay? So if we look at the M16 with the M203 grenade launcher, notice how it shoots bullets and it shoots grenades, and there is a trigger for shooting grenades, and there is a trigger for shooting bullets. They're separate. Then you look over at the XM29, there's only one trigger, and it shoots both bullets and grenades. And the only differentiator between the two is this little selector switch right here, KE standing for kinetic energy or bullets, and HE standing for high explosive. So, I mean, you can imagine somebody forgetting where their selector switch is, firing a warning shot, and whoops! That was a grenade, not That's, a That seems like another design flaw that should have like been brought to attention early on because I definitely know, personally, I would make that mistake. I would definitely forget which setting it was on and I would accidentally set off the high explosive without a doubt in my mind. A 5.56 five, round. My bad. Okay, third and final reason, it was just going to be a logistical nightmare all the way throughout because that big-ass fancy scope on top is going to take batteries, and if you can't get batteries to make that scope work, the rangefinder isn't going to work, which means you can't program the smart grenades, which means you're basically carrying around an 18-pound gun that is ultimately a 5.56 rifle with a 9-inch barrel, and a 9-inch barrel at 5.56 gives you a range of like 200 yards, so it just doesn't work out if you don't have batteries. Secondly, even if you can get batteries all the way there, you got to have smart grenades which have microchips on them and I don't know what you know about American manufacturing but we're not that great at making microchips and the places we get all our microchips from are either places we're likely to go to war with or places that are bordering places that we're likely to go to war with which could pose a huge issue in ammo procurement should war break out so because of all these reasons in 2000 yeah it wouldn't be a good idea if uh, war broke out and then all of our guns had no uh, ammunition all of a sudden 2004 the chief of the infantry steps up and is like absolutely not I'm not sending all these guys out to the front lines carrying tactical car doors this is not happening kill the program it's over so at this point all the other high-ranking brass and bureaucrats and weapons contractors are like well this is kind of an issue because this program was going to be the reason that it was okay that we messed up the last program that cost 300 million dollars and now we've spent a bunch of more money on this program so much so that we're not even going to tell the public how much we kind of have to make this program work so what if we kept the program alive and we just split this gun into two pieces? We'll have the rifle that's going to replace the M16, and then we'll also have this cool smart grenade launcher. How about that? To which the Pentagon is like, oh my god, what a terrific idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And I can't prove this part, but the word on the street has always been, at this point in the project, the only feedback the Pentagon gave about the actual rifle portion was, and I quote, make sure it's more Starship Troopers-like. And this is where the XM8 comes from. And while the G8 does look really cool and... 
Oh, it does look really similar. <laughs> Super futuristic. Ultimately, it was just the German service rifle, the G36, that HK took and wrapped inside of a plastic body kit to make it look cooler and then tried to sell it to the American government. And their big selling point was going to be that the new XM8 was going to be modular, meaning that you could take different barrel lengths and stick them on the same gun, making it so it was better at different types of combat. If you were going to be doing a bunch of close quarters combat, you could have a little short barrel. And if you were going to be doing further out combat, you could have a longer barrel for improved accuracy, which honestly is a terrific idea. The only problem is the AR platform, the M16, the M4, it can already do that. So just to be clear, it doesn't do anything new that the M16 isn't already doing, and it shoots the exact same bullet. So there's pretty much no reason whatsoever to waste the money in switching rifles to a rifle that's basically the same. But there's money and reputations on the line, so they're going to keep trying to make it happen anyways. They end up ordering a bunch of prototypes, have it tested by the military, and everybody finds out pretty much immediately, oh hey, when you shoot a bunch of bullets through this plastic gun, it gets hot, and then the plastic starts melting off the gun. So the XM8 ends up getting scrapped in 2007, but there is a silver lining. It's not a complete loss because we still have the... They didn't have any experts that told them that this was going to happen, you know, during the design phase. It already got this far along before they realized shooting a lot of bullets was going to cause the plastic to melt. I mean, it's crazy. Like, who do they have working on these projects where there's hundreds of millions of dollars being spent? You think uh, some of these objections would be raised earlier in the process or at least solutions to them would be. XM25, the smart grenade launcher. And this thing is actually absolutely awesome. Awesome. It's pretty much the same grenade launcher from the XM29. The only thing they changed is they bumped it up from a 20 millimeter to a 25 millimeter grenade to make it a little bit more lethal. And now the plan moving forward with this thing is instead of having everybody in the military carry a grenade launcher, you're just going to take one guy from the squad and have him be the smart grenade launcher guy. Like you lose one rifleman, you gain one guy that can shoot smart grenades 700 yards. It's a pretty fair trade off and probably a really good idea in a lot of use cases. So they give to the grunts and send them off to war and seemingly everybody loves it the rangers get a hold of it they seem to like it they give it to the 101st airborne and those guys absolutely love it they end up nicknaming it the punisher some of the leaders in the infantry are quoted as saying it'll turn a 30 minute gunfight into a three minute gunfight this thing is absolutely awesome because you can have everybody using their m16s their m4s their 240s their saws laying down suppressing fire, forcing the enemy to hide behind cover, and then just use a grenade to take out the enemy from behind cover, and it's a huge tactical advantage. And this goes on for years until one day in 2016, the entire narrative changes, and seemingly overnight, the XM25 Punisher becomes a giant piece of shit. Somebody starts digging up all these old stories, looking for anything in the history of the XM25 that could be used against it. Like, there was this one time back in 2012 where this one ranger unit on this one mission decided that they would rather have a Riflemen instead of this grenade launcher. Therefore, this weapon must not be very reliable. It's not like the Rangers are a special operations unit, and maybe that particular mission didn't call for a fucking grenade launcher, but whatever. Oh, and then there was this one time in 2013 where the weapon malfunctioned one time and all the safety features worked exactly how they were supposed to, but the operator of the weapon still got a minor injury. So we're going to go ahead and use that as the excuse to can the entire program for, you know, troop safety, because nobody's going to get mad at us if we're trying to protect the troops, right? Right. Okay, because here's what we're not going to do. We're absolutely not going to tell the American public that somewhere along the line, somebody remembered, oh, exploding bullets are a war crime, and they have been since the 1800s. I wonder what the difference is between an exploding bullet and a small grenade that gets shot out of a gun. And then, if you Google it, Holy shit, this line has been drawn in the sand since 1868. If it's 400 grams or less, it's an exploding bullet, and if it's more than that, it's a piece of ordnance. And a 25 millimeter grenade is apparently less than 400 grams, so this entire project has been a war crime the entire time, right from the get-go. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Again, it's crazy that no one at any point realized this, or if they did realize it, obviously then they just ignored it until either someone brought it back up again and then they decided, uh-oh, we need to scrap this. Yeah, it's wild that with all the money being spent and the, you know, the you know brilliant minds at work, you know, behind designing these these weapons and you gotta figure lawyers you know, or, you know, for these companies checking out things like this would uh, come across that sooner, but uh, apparently, apparently not. Dollars of taxpayers' money has now been wasted because somebody didn't want to Google shit first.
Whoa! You know, it's only a war crime if the bullet explodes inside the enemy. This is supposed to explode over the top of the enemy, so this should be completely legal. Fuck. Yeah, that is true, but hear me out. If you can point the laser at the wall the bad guy is hiding behind and make the grenade explode a couple inches past that wall, you can also aim the laser at the bad guy and make that grenade explode a couple inches into that bad guy. So yeah, I guess in conclusion, that's the story of the OICW program. That time the US government decided that they were gonna spend three decades and hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars to develop a fancy new futuristic grenade launcher that from its inception, the very idea of it was actually illegal. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang, out. Buh, you know, it's only a war crime if the bullet explodes inside the enemy. If it explodes, I mean, that was another uh, great video from the Fat Electrician, and it's it's crazy the amount of money that gets spent on some of these projects that's, you know, end up going absolutely, absolutely nowhere, you know, honestly. I mean, this one partially made it into the field for, you know, a while before they realized that it was a war crime, and probably not the best idea to have in the hands of our military. I'm sure there's been countless other projects that, you know, have spent billions upon billions of dollars that just never saw the light of day. You kind of wonder where that money goes sometimes, but... I mean, I always love the clips that he shows in between. They're always kind of spot on. You know, the humor is always is on point. If there's any other videos by the Fat Electrician I should check out, let me know down in the comments below. Until next time, have a good one.